With Valve releasing quite possibly the best event in the history of Dota 2, they've also pulled back the curtain on one of the more prominent mysteries in the game's lore, the creator of the Sacred Scepter, Aghanim. Now that he's a fully fleshed out character with a model, voice, and a beard, now's as good as time as any to look back on the Apex Mage's origins to explore his mystique, as well as examine the games of the Dota 2 universe to see what we can learn from him now. Aghanim's legacy started incredibly early in patch 5.31 or so in May of 2004. This took the form of his signature item, Aghanim's Scepter, which is described as the scepter of a wizard with demigod-like powers, a tagline it'll hold on to moving forward. The item was named after the secondary antagonist of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, which isn't too much of a surprise when you consider that Lincoln's sphere is likely based off of Lincoln from World of Warcraft, who in turn is based off of the series protagonist, Link. The item at this point is pretty much just Dagon. Scepter had an active component that would zap a unit for 1000 magic damage at a hefty 600 mana and roughly 1 minute cooldown. Not only that, but its recipe was unreasonably expensive, comprising of two Mystic Staves, an Energy Booster, Null Talisman, a Ring of Basilius, and a Soul Booster, which came out to about 10,920 gold. If nothing else, its price tag made it feel like a luxury item, but all in all it's a little too much for not enough. In version 5.40, which was released a little later in May 2004, the item's effect was reworked to upgrade your hero's ultimate. This would be its defining characteristic for over a decade. The item itself went through a few recipe changes during the Dota All-Stars era, including 5.50 where it was made out of a Soul Booster and Mystic Staff for a total of 6,050 gold. 6.60, where you could take two Blade of Alacrities, or two Ogre Axes, or two Staff of Wizardries, along with a Point Booster and recipe for a total of 4,300 gold and 6.69 where it's just a Blade of Alacrity, Ogre Axe, Staff of Wizardry, and a Point Booster for a total of 4200 gold. Everything was pretty hush-hush for a while. The item exuded an aura of importance and didn't need any additional lore explanation because of its powerful effect, despite its brief description. So imagine the hype in 6.72 when Rubik was released. This version came out in April of 2011, almost a full 7 years after Aghanim Scepter debuted. That's seven years of familiarizing yourself with the item and connotating the name with game-changing upgrades, and then the character Sun is released. It was a pretty big deal. First off, this gave Rubik a huge rub, as being associated with the then-unknown character made the Grand Magus live up to his title. Not only that, but the character named the Grand Magus stole your spells. What could his father do? All of the implied theory crafting aside, Rubik's lore didn't explicitly add too much to the conversation. We know that Rubik is the son of Aghanim, many wizards have challenged him but could not surpass him, and that he has endless talent. All we had then was our collective imagination to fill in the blank of who Aghanim could possibly be. Fast forward just a little bit, and Dota 2 is released to the public in its open beta stage in late 2011. Aghanim Scepter is still in the game with a nicely updated look, while retaining the original's item description. And although Rubik wasn't ported over right away, it was a nice touch that every hero in the game had a voice line when picking up the item, even if they can't quite agree on what to call it. Sweet Scepter. Blessed Scepter. Sacred Scepter. Yes, Sacred Scepter. When Rubik was ported over in June of 2012, this was our first taste of Aghanim as a character, except it's a little downplayed here. Rubik's lore doesn't mention anything about his father, in fact, and their relationship is only briefly brought up in a few voice responses. Father is a masterpiece. It's been so long since I held this. Would that I had father's skill with construction. But if we've learned anything at all about Dota at this point, it's that we can always learn more by digging deeper. A few cosmetic items are modeled after Aghanim's Scepter, starting with Keeper of the Lights, Strike of the Light, although that's kind of all there is to it. Rubik's Scepter of the Grand Magus is a green version of the item, and it comes with a description that reads, Few know that Rubik's talents for mimicry extend to Arcane Assembly. I like this one a lot because it alludes back to his voice line of yearning for Aghanim's skill with construction. Brewmaster also has Aghanim's Basher which begs the question, What could be better than an Aghanim Scepter? This. This is better. And last but not least, there's Tiny's Crystal Dryad, a more rustic version of Scepter. This description gives us more insight about the origin of the item, mentioning that had the mage known what corruption his Scepter would inflict upon the world, he would have burned it and buried it, and sown salt over its cursed grave. For when carried in a fist of stone, Aghanim's Scepter unleashes the spirit of the Crystal Dryad, and no foe is safe. 
This was the first real bit of information regarding Aghanim and Dota, and it lets us know two important facts. Aghanim's remorse over creating the Scepter, although this would be refuted later on, and that the Scepter can take on different forms. So again, if we apply some imagination, it could be cool to think of what those items can look like for other heroes. As usual, the hero voice responses are the biggest source of information regarding the topic at hand, and due to the circumstances of the game, all the responses are directed at Rubik or when picking up an Aghanim Scepter. From what I've gathered here, the general theme seems to be that the other heroes don't believe that Rubik is nearly as talented or prolific as Aghanim, and there's some confusion regarding the fate of the Apex Mage. Step out of your father's shadow, Rubik. The world awaits. Your old man died a been Rubik, and you are never was. This power is forbidden to wield, and yet it is mine. Aghanim's scepter is a thing to be feared. Is it true about Aghanim's demise? I've heard conflicting reports. I must admit, occasionally, a mortal does create something of consequence. Dark Willow in particular seems to be interested in learning Aghanim's secrets, and is extra mean to Rubik. Give me that stuff, Rubik! I want your father's secrets! Rubik, you're no enigma. You're a sad little boy, looking for approval. How's Levin and your father's shadow treating you? Artifact actually brings quite a bit to the table, and as always, fingers crossed that Artifact 2.0 will do well, because it's proven to be a great method of expanding on Dota's lore. A few of the heroes, as well as a creep card, bring up Aghanim in their voice lines here too, making note of his vast well of knowledge, and referencing his power in some way. Aghanim's secrets should be mine alone! Even Aghanim himself could not stop me. To have access to Aghanim's research is a dream come true. With Aghanim's resources, what isn't possible? Perhaps the most relevant voice lines come from a character introduced in the Artifact world known as Vanessa. She appears in a couple of cards and even makes a cameo appearance in the Ascension comic, but most of her presence exists in the form of lore responses on other cards. Most notably for our purposes, let's focus on Arcane Assault and Aghanim Sanctum. In Arcane Assault, Vanessa comments on Rubik's relation to Aghanim. Rubik claims to be Aghanim's son. I'm not sure I believe it. But I certainly wouldn't say that to Rubik's face. This can mean any number of things, and it's likely meant to be vague so that the lore can be expanded upon in the future. But it's my headcanon that Rubik might be a construct of some sort. After all, Aghanim was known for his crafting ability, and as we'll see later, the two barely resemble one another. But none of that's official at all, so let's continue. Aghanim Sanctum is so much more intriguing because it gives us a look into what the character is all about. It appears to be a grandiose library filled to the brim with research and secrets, while the card itself fully restores your tower's mana for the turn, effectively letting you use double the spells when you activate it. A very powerful effect as you can guess. With that said, the voice line associated with this card has Vanessa second-guessing the true fate of Aghanim. Aghanim is the greatest wizard of all time. There is no question, there is no debate. No one is his equal. So when he vanished one day, we never wondered how. We wondered why. Some say he feared for his life and ran into hiding, but I don't believe that for a second. You ask me. Aghanim is working on something. Something important. Something that will change the world. Turns out she was pretty spot on with her assumption, and if this is any indication as to what the character is capable of, I just hope that she has a bigger role to play in the future, and hopefully we can get some more trips to the speculation station out of it. Acknowledgement of Aghanim and Dota Underlords is brief, but I still think it bears mentioning. The description for Four Staff simply reads, They say Aghanim has a fancier staff, but I've never seen it. Warlock also has a voice line that calls out Aghanim and his son. I should be Aghanim's heir, not Rubik. I think this shows that Warlock is really arrogant about his abilities, and he's jealous that Rubik gets to learn from Aghanim. But it is strange how he implies that Aghanim may have wanted someone other than his son to carry on his legacy. Combined with Vanessa's voice line from earlier, I think there's a good chance that Rubik and Aghanim aren't related by blood. And who knows, maybe Rubik really is just a creation. So that was a whole lot of talking before we finally got to the head honcho, the big boss, the apex mage, Aghanim. He was revealed pretty much out of nowhere as the main character of the 2020 summer event. In the days leading up to the reveal, Scepter's icon did change gradually, appearing like it was cracking and bursting with magic. On July 14th, 2020, Valve released a trailer for the Aghanim's Labyrinth game mode. Outside of being a visual feast and proof that Valve can make trailers and cutscenes if they wanted to, this was the first time that the community had ever experienced Aghanim the character, including his voice, personality, and a brief look at the mage himself. 
Toward the end of the video, he claims that he has come back to this world and brought along monsters of various dimensions to answer one question. Can your hands wield the true Aghanim Scepter? The trailer makes it sound like he's here because he wants to test the heroes to find out who's worthy of his power. Which, you know, fair enough. But this contradicts the Crystal Dryad item description, since it seems like Aghanim is more than proud of his work, and he's actively finding people to wield the true scepter. Anywho, the event itself is a roguelike take on Dota 2, as you go through a series of randomly picked rooms, kill the monsters inside, and use the gold to buy items as you normally would. There's also a few bonus rooms that act like minigames, whose entire purpose is to let you earn more gold. You even get to pick special ability upgrades in between rounds, like making Omni Knight's ultimate grant magic resist, or letting Disruptor's kinetic field heal allies in the radius. Cool stuff like that. In the final room, Aghanim himself will be there to test your party in a mix between normal Dota 2 and Toho Bullet Hell, and his bag of tricks includes an AoE stun, crystal projectiles, a laser that chases you, spears that lock you down and pin you to a wall, a blink that leaves shards that knock you back, and the most interesting one, a spell that causes Aghanim to channel and steal one of every player's abilities, locking it in a crystal that must be broken if you want to use your spell again. I like this one in particular because it's so similar to Rubik's spell steal, Like father, like son, right? Aghanim does spend a great deal of the time narrating the event, and it sounds like he has unique responses for each room, hero, item pickups, and whatnot. There's actually over 40 minutes of recorded dialogue, performed effortlessly by the talented Rich Summer. Although most of these are irrelevant to learning about who he is as a person, I've handpicked some voice lines that reveal a bit more about Aghanim, as well as what it means for the lore of Dota 2 as a whole. Before I do, I just want to mention that his overall tone is pretty jovial and jolly. He sounds a lot like an enthusiastic game show host, and his cadence of speech is similar to Storm Spirits. Prior to this, in my mind, I always thought he was going to be a brooding, ominous, serious kind of character. So yeah, this was a bit jarring for me. But all that aside, let's dive in. When picking a hero, Aghanim refers to most of the choices by descriptors, but he has a special relationship with Omni Knight. He really hates him for some reason. Oh ho ho, if it isn't the one they call Purist, oh goody two-shoes himself. Oh, is he coming too? Well, whatever. On the other hand, it seems like he and Snapfire used to be really good friends. Hello, old girl. Beatrix, the times we used to have such good times. And let it be known that Aghanim does in fact lift, bro. Aghanim the no days off also lifts. I just did a hundred push-ups, hero, and I am pumped. Also tired, all of my blood is in my arm muscles, I feel like I'm going to pass out. He also has some lines when your hero buys the scepter, and he mentions how the ones sold in the shops are knockoffs, but he is happy that you're getting it. Also, it looks like the shopkeepers get to keep all of the profits. Ooh, a scepter! Not bad for a knockoff! <laughs> you should get a load of the real thing! Every scepter comes free with Aghanim the Mighty's seal of approval! That guy has been peddling my recipe for generations, and I have yet to see a dime! Heading into the more lore-driven dialogue, Aghanim tells the story of how he became lost from this world, and how the scepter came to be. Now you may be wondering why Aghanim was traveling across dimensions to begin with. The story, not unlike some of you, is short and embarrassing. On your path to Grand Magus, you are taught many things, none of which is as important as this. Never, under any circumstances, transpose thyself across dimensions! But how does one craft a scepter of infinite power? By transposing thyself across dimensions! I was lost among the mists of creation until I heard a tiny voice reciting my words across the din of time. It was you, and you, and you, and you, calling me back, creating your quaint little versions of Aghanim's scepter. So thank you, friends. Without your little incantations, I'd still be twisting through time and space. Not only that, but a couple lines bring up that Aghanim has been supposedly lost for several millennia, and in his words, even half an eternity. Given that he knows Snapfire, Vanessa pointing out that Aghanim's disappearance was a notable event, and how Warlock wanted to be Aghanim's heir, this leads me to believe that he's probably experienced time a lot slower while traveling dimensions, in order for these quotes to make sense. And just for the romantic in all of us, one of the bosses known as Derega the Ample has had physical relations with Aghanim. I've taken many partners in eons of travel, but none was as 
potent and generous as Storega. There she was, grinding her granite toes at the shore of a lava flow. Our eyes met. She hoisted me into the air and, well, you can surmise the rest. That's right. He fucked me a rock. And that's all we know for the time being. Of course, things are subject to change all the time in Dota 2, but I hope this was a good starting point for anyone curious about Aghanim and his past. Do you have any theories or headcanons about the characters? Be sure to start the conversation in the comments. I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was all about Aghanim. So hey, thanks for making it this far. Please follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Join the $5 tier on my Patreon to vote on future Dotaology episodes, and have lots of fun in Aghanim's Labyrinth. See you soon!